Okay, so thank you for introduction, uh, Evelyn. So <clears throat> uh, my name is Eun Song Kang. I'm currently associate professor at Texas A&M AgriLife Research Center. And then as Evelyn uh, just mentioned, um, our AgriLife team is conducting the project suffering from uh, NRCS and which is mainly focused on the uh, the how to reduce the uh, nutrient loss and contaminant and in soil and water using the innovative practice such as biochar practice. So in this talk, um, I'm going to explain about the uh, manual management using biochar practice, especially how biochar uh, improve nutrient management and enhance water quality and even reduce greenhouse gas emission from the field. So uh, as you can see, the biochar is a, a charcoal-like material made from different waste. Uh, as you can see from the slide, the biochar can be made from uh, animal manure or grass, crop residue, and wood waste, and also biosolid sludge from wastewater treatment plant. And these waste can be converted to biochar using thermal process we call the pyrolysis. The pyrolysis is to heat those waste at 300 up to 800 degrees Celsius without oxygen to make a biochar. And those biochar uh, can be applied for field for several uh, application. And interesting is during this thermal process to make a biochar, actually uh, there is no all negligible greenhouse gas emission. So currently the pyrolysis to make a biochar is considered as a very green uh, process. And usually uh, we have a lab scale, the pyrolysis reactor to make a small biochar for testing, but also there is the full scale the pyrolysis reactor, uh, which is available industrial application. I think this slide is the most interesting slide for everyone uh, using the manual. And basically the uh, biochar has a several advantage, especially the when biochar apply to the field with the dairy manual. Uh, in short, the biochar can enhance the plant growth and uh, soil fertility and even make more diverse microorganisms in soil, which is helping uh, the agriculture practice. The first biochar is a slow release biofertilizer. When we make uh, biochar from dairy manure or other animal manure, this biochar is slow, slowly releasing nutrient from biochar to the soil, finally to plant. This is very important because the biochar release slowly release nutrient to the plant and soil. This means more effectively uh, delivering nutrient to the plant and crop, crop system. Actually, the uh, dairy manual biochar can release the nutrient five times slower than dairy manual itself. It can actually minimize the nutrient loss from the manure. Also, the biochar has a very high nutrient retention capacity. What, uh, what it means actually biochar can absorb excessive nutrient from manure and chemical fertilizer. And then uh, the, from the biochar, the nutrient is slowly released to nutrient, uh, soil and plant. Also biochar has high water holding capacity and the, uh, the wood biochar or dairy manure biochar has higher water holding capacity than uh, just the sandy room soil itself. So for example, the wood biochar has seven, seven times higher water holding capacity and manual biochar has about seven times higher water holding capacity. It means actually when we apply biochar to the field, we can mitigate the drought problem uh, over the hot summer. Also biochar can provide nutrient and, and water or organic carbon to the soil and plant system. Of course, it can enhance plant growth, soil fertility and microbiome system. And usually uh, 
currently 2.5 to up to 10 ton biochar per hectare is applied for field for the agronomic aspect, also environmental application. So uh, as I mentioned, the, our team is conducting the project supported from NRCS. And then the project focuses on uh, biochar driven the mineral management. And the title of this project is the Sustainable Ecosystem for Dairy Manual, and essentially integrating field lab and decision suffering tool to develop the management guideline across the soil, crop, and water. And more likely in this project, we focus on monitoring of nutrient and antibiotics, and then microbial pathogen from soil and water and plant, especially with without biochar practice. Also, we want to evaluate the biochar effectiveness to manage nutrient and also minimizing contaminant in soil and water. Finally, using those data, we want to develop the model to predict fate, transport, and transformation of a contaminant in soil and water system. And so in this project, this slide show actually uh, overall concept for conducting this project. So as you can see, a, uh, we apply dairy manual to the field. And as you know, the dairy manual contain high level of nutrient and some amount of antibiotics and microbial pathogen. And then we also applied biochar from different source and mixed with soil for the cropping system. So in the soil, actually biochar uh, adsorb, actually remove uh, nutrient and contaminant such as antibiotics and E. coli. Also biochar interact with soil bacteria to remove degraded nutrient and contaminant. Interesting is also there are some evidence biochar also remove greenhouse gas from the soil and cropping system. So in this manner, actually, uh, biochar practice enhance water quality, especially lower contaminant in groundwater and runoff water. Also, biochar can enhance soil health to make a fertile soil or diverse microbial community. And then recently, biochar can reduce the greenhouse gas emission uh, in the soil. So uh, we are analyzing a bunch of data from the field, but uh, I wanna share some of the data, uh, even it is early stage, but I wanna share those data to give you some other pos possible application of biochar. Uh, this slide show effect of biochar on plant growth and also soil fertility. So from the plot, you can see 0% means the soil plot uh, without biochar and one to for 8% means we add 1% to 8% of biochar in the pot. So that over the several weeks, the greenhouse trial, we see actually 4% or 8% biochar in the pot really support higher plant growth than uh, the bio, the data pot without biochar. So it was actually quite a support our idea, biochar can enhance plant growth. Also, we analyze soil fertility, same thing, actually adding biochar made more fertile soil. And in the field demonstration, uh, we made a micro plot about three meter by three meter. And then the, we actually apply biochar uh, in two different soil, one is a sandium soil, the other is a clay soil. Also, we see the three different plant. One is a forest grass and grain crop and energy crops. So our plot design based on over two different soil and three different plant and with, without biochar. So from different set of plot, we are monitoring plant growth and plant composition, also soil nutrient and also chemical contaminant such as antibiotics and also microbial uh, pathogen. Also, we made uh, actually run of plot 
to collect water from the rainfall to see water quality uh, with without biochar. So we have uh, four different plot. One is a uh, plot one is no till, no biochar manual applied. Plot two is no till, biochar edit uh, manual applied. Plot three is actually till the system, no biochar manual applied. Plot four is actually till, no biochar, no manual. So from different plot, we monitor water quality, especially containing uh, nutrient antibiotics and E. coli. So this slide show maybe a couple of data about the nitrogen and phosphorus concentration you know, in the runoff water from different plot. So as I mentioned, we have a different plot design and plant one to plant three. And then as you can see the total nitrogen in, in the runoff water, actually the plot two, it can be no till manual applied with biochar show lower, actually quite lower uh, total nitrogen in runoff water compared to other plot without biochar. This means biochar could actually reduce the uh, nitrogen uh, runoff con concentration in the runoff water. Also, the right side, the figure show total phosphorus from different plot. Same thing, the plot two containing biochar has a lower total phosphorus compared to two other plot without biochar. This means also biochar could reduce phosphorus in soil and in runoff water by their adsorption or interaction with microbiome. So short message is that biochar practice to the manual applied field can reduce nitrogen phosphorus concentration in the runoff water that is actually benefit to protect our environmental system. And then also this slide showed E. coli as a microbial pathogen uh, profile in runoff water with, without biochar from the manual applied field. So as you can see, the plot two containing biochar show much lower E. coli concentration in the runoff water compared to plot one, plot three without biochar. So it means actually biochar in the soil can reduce the E. coli pathogen using their adsorption or uh, the antibacterial capacity. So that it means actually low biochar to reduce microbial pathogen in the soil plot to protect our water resource. And then the last slide show the our very current data uh, is that effect of biochar or greenhouse gas emission control. So now climate change issue is very emerging. So the one of the thing is how to apply biochar to the crop field to reduce greenhouse gas emission control. The design is actually soil and soil plus dairy manure, and then soil and dairy manure plus wood biochar, soil and manure plus actually calcium quarry biochar, which is our own uh, biochar and soil and manure and activated carbon. And the right hand side, the upper figure show CO2 emission from different soil and soil plus biochar. It was a still very early, early stage of data, but it's interesting is about 5% calcium biochar or 5% activated carbon, quite a lower CO2 emission from the manual applied field. So it could be one of a good solution to reduce em emission control using those biochar. Also, the right-hand side, the bottom figure show actually methane emission from different soil and soil plus biochar. Also, same thing happens in the calcium quarry biochar or activated carbon lower, very, very much lower uh, methane emission compared to other soil composition. This means those the calcium quarry biochar and activated carbon can lower greenhouse gas emission from the uh, dairy manual applied field. So essentially, we are doing uh, much more analysis right now. So probably uh, we can provide more useful data uh, for next webinar. And finally, I appreciate our sponsor, USA, USDA NICS. 
to support our project. Thank you.